But this is still under investigation, so we don't know where they are coming from. Uh, but what we can say is that they are indeed very worrying threats, especially because this is happening to people who are only doing their jobs and they are trying to really create an environment where, as a country, uh, we move forward with full knowledge of what is happening as opposed to just walking in the dark. Mm. From the reporting I've seen so far, Dr. or Professors Glenda Gray and Professor Tulio de Oliveira have been affected by these threats. How big, how long is the list of scientists who've been threatened? Uh, the names that I've seen, uh, quite a number, I think I saw about seven or so names. Um, and, 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 and as we can imagine, um, this is basically people who, just like all of us, they've got families, they've got children, they've got loved ones, and, and you don't really want to um, have such kind of intimidation tactics happening in a manner that ultimately we just want, uh, because we don't even know where it comes from. So we don't want to be driven back into, into the dark ages in terms of people wanting us not to respect science and the information that we provide because what they are reporting is basically what they are discovered. They are not creating anything. So mm. whatever is the variant is not their creation. It is actually what they have figured and they discovered and they need to warn the, the country and the whole world for that matter. And the world has been dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, Dr. Morfe, for almost two years now. Now we're reading about these threats. Are they a new thing or just more intensified compared perhaps to other times? Yeah, in South Africa for me, I mean, I've been in the science system for the past 20 or so years. And for me, this is the first time that I have seen threats of this nature. And, and, and of course, when you read some of these emails that are sent through, it, it does really sound very worrying. And I think, you know, people must just appreciate that while the, there are so many inconveniences and also some real problems that have been created by COVID, uh, it really shouldn't be a case of saying those who are warning you are the ones who are a problem. I mean, can you imagine a situation where we are going to live in a country where the weatherman tells you that there are going to be thunderstorms and you decide let's stone this weatherman because we had plans to have parties and things like that. The weatherman is not creating anything. They're just reporting to you that this is going to happen, so take the necessary precaution. And this is exactly the message that scientists try to bring, to say if there is a new variant, it has to be reported because you don't know how dangerous it is. So yeah. if they don't report, then the next thing is the same variant kills thousands and thousands of people. Can you imagine a situation where they come back a month later and they say, oh, by the way, we discovered this three months ago before it could kill people. So what these scientists are doing is that they are basically just saying, this is the new thing that we have found. How can we actually make sure that while we are figuring out how problematic it's going to be, that we all take the necessary precautions? And if I'm hearing you correctly, Dr. Morfe, these threats began to come in, what, in the space of the last three weeks or so? Because are they Omicron detection linked threats? These are definitely uh, Omicron detection uh, linked. Uh, they, they really speak about the, the announcement specifically. And, and basically, the, the suggestion seemed to be that uh, the scientists should have just kept quiet. And, and it, it's, it's the most irresponsible things to, thing to do in science when you have picked up some danger of this nature and you keep it to yourself. Mm -hmm. And how are the scientists feeling? I don't know if you've spoken to them at all, but if you have, are you able to give us an idea of how they're feeling now that they're getting all of these threats, which are, as I was reading, which include death threats? Look, they, they are worried. I mean, I did speak to, to some of them uh, because, and, and this is really some, something that sometimes people don't appreciate. It is not easy for them to come with these difficult messages. I mean, when I get a call to say that we want to update you on something, and you know, it's like, is it bad news or good news? And, and you could see that when it is bad news, that they are also very uncomfortable, but they have got a duty. So, so these threats really started coming and, and, and you can see when you speak to them, immediately when they were coming, they were informing me that, look, this is what is going on and we really need to act on it. So they are very worried. And as I said, just like you and I, they've got families, they've got loved ones, uh, they've got children, some of them, and, and you don't want to be, uh, you know, written emails where people say we even know your address and stuff like that. Mm. So this is 
uh, very worrying to them. And what's being done, if anything at all, at this stage to protect them? Are they getting extra security? Look, at this point in time, I can't say anything in that regard. All I can say is that this information, uh, as far as I know, is being acted on. There are investigations that are happening. Um, and, and the status about other things, I would rather not comment on it because I think it's, it's, it's really quite a situation where you would want to leave it to the capable and relevant authorities to deal with. So would I be right, Doctor, to suppose that law enforcement has been notified? Yes, you would be right to, 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 to think that. And I would imagine for me, the, the other concern would be once people start to feel that their safety or the safety of their, their spouse, their children, broader family is at risk, you may have a situation where South Africa is unable to rely on some of its finest scientists because people don't want to put their lives and those of their families at risk, even if it is for work that is important to the national project. This is really our biggest fear. We don't want them to do the work with me. You know, the, the whole thing of saying, do it without fear or favor. This is really what scientists need to do. Uh, and, and, and we just want them to, they are professionals. We know that they are sticking to doing what they need to do, but we really don't want this thing to stop so that we, en we enable them to get the space to do their jobs without fear or favor. Because this is exactly how we are going to be safe. So now we know a little bit more about the, 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 the variant and they, they are bringing that information. And that information, some of it just brings a little bit of relief in terms of what we see. So if we don't do that, then sometimes you live in fear of the darkness that doesn't really have anything that can bite. Or sometimes you live without fear. Meanwhile, you are actually sitting with danger. So these scientists are quite crucial for us all to make sure that as a country and as a country and as a world that we are safe because ultimately these warnings are not just about South Africa, they are about what the world needs to be aware of. And yeah. also the information that they provide is very crucial in terms again of development of vaccines because you always want to know that as you pick these things up, even the development of vaccines, you are able to make sure that whatever treating is required on the vaccines, that you, you give them coverage to all the necessary partners. Dr. Mboneni Moafe, good to speak to you, sir. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you, Tembekele.